Yeah. Hello, Gino. Well, good morning, Sunshine. How are you? Fantastic. Hello, everybody. And well? Hello. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Yeah, you're coming in very strong, brother. Um, I am in a presentation room. As you can tell, they've got an Omni camera. Uh, so you're probably seeing us, and it's tracking us. So if you're there, and there is, there is Mr. Dalton. Uh, you did your hair for us this morning. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan is out of uh, Rancho Cucamonga. So he's out of an Inland Empire. But he gets a semi-native bumper sticker, Colorado native bumper, because he's here all the time. Uh, his, his, he had one son at Fort Carson in the Springs, and the other son right now works at um, El Paso County in Colorado Springs as well. So um, we see Dan quite often. And uh, even my dog misses him because he walks my dog when he's in town. He, he takes him around. Uh, so Dan, I'm, uh, I was going to let the team like, introduce themselves in their group. And we're very fortuitous. There's a couple of them that will be at ISC West. So um, we'll get a chance to walk them through, show them the roadmap of what we're doing and what's coming up. Um, you know, I know we've been name dropping here quite a bit about Cherry Creek. But um, Cherry Creek is just doing a case study with us as we're the glue. But in this area, right, from in just Greeley alone, we do Banner Health um, as mass notification for them. They use us for uh, CAP messages, and Dan will get into a little bit deeper into that. Are you guys familiar with CAP? No chance, Common Work Protocol? It, it is the government's Twitter. Right, so we'll know the emergency operations center, for example, here at Wells, at Windsor's police department, we can actually see messages that come in and automate them so that they can be set up for your school environment. Um, and I don't want to cannibalize your presentation, Dan, but um, you know, those are some of the things that, that we do. Um, Adams 14, we just do a, a deployment across all of their schools right now, Adams 12. Uh, Boulder Valley has recently signed on, and Westminster, we just started, Westminster Public Schools, we just did our third installation there. Um, Douglas County, and even at Littleton Public Schools, which is one of the first, if not the only, location in the nation that uses us for fire alarm. So we have a, even AHJ approval to tie into them to use us as announciators. So a lot of times these things, you know, uh, incidents occur, and because of that, we respond to it. So um, we, we took this marketing presentation and we took about 40 slides out of it, so you're welcome already. <laughs> you don't have to go through that and be belabored. Um, and so Dan, this group here, they all have that sheet that you and I kind of looked at earlier, and so this is gonna be very interactive. You know, you guys have a, a wish list, right? Um, and it's just as important to know not just your wish list, but what are your pain points right now? So what do you guys struggle with that you're currently uh, with, with AMX? Um, or, you know, you talked about analog systems. So yes, we're analog, we're hybrid IP, we're full IP. It's all predicated on how you want to do it. But what are some of your pain points right now? <laughs> They're all over the place. Uh, emergency alerts being unreliable um, and how they fire, whether or not they link into the rest of our systems, you know, having to fire maybe two different fire drill things because you hit the fire drill on the fire panel and then they have to go hit it at the uh, touch panel to light up the next piece. Um, just inconsistent uh, audio to across the board, you know, class is too loud, class is too quiet, common zones not tied in great places so we don't have great control over each one of those things. Definitely. I thought I just said one. Um, no, I'm just kidding. You. No, I could have just, just, just said the only one's pain point is called AMX. And then we could just leave it at that. That's fine. That too. brings it down yeah. much quicker. Yeah. Much quicker. Okay. Hey, well, Dan, I'm in here in, in their room and they have a bunch of um, I love you guys um, collateral that's up here as well. So we'll, we'll speak a little bit to that. But yeah, if you're ready, Dan, go ahead and just hit the slide and then, you know what they say, right? There's no such thing as a free Vegas trip, so you guys have to endure yes. like six slides. Uh, hey, Dan, what's the day that we're doing the uh, 
uh, the hospitality. Is it Wednesday night or Thursday? No, it's typically the first night. Um, I haven't looked that granular at the schedule, mm -hmm. um, but it's typically the, the first uh, evening, okay. Wednesday. So um, when you guys come on Thursday, I'll save you pretzels. All right. So you come in, you're not going to miss anything, and we'll just grab a couple of warm beers and wait for them, okay? They'll be good. <laughs> okay, my friend, if you want to go ahead and step forward, we've got our team here. All right. So uh, a little bit about us, you know, I think one of the questions that came up was longevity. How long are you guys have you been in business? Uh, what's the size of your business? That type of thing. I think you found that out the hard way of what what had occurred. Um, so we've been around since 1977, based out of Roanoke, Virginia. And our our actual principal, the the original owner, we've since been uh, merger and acquisition. We've been acquired. Um, actually started and built his first fortune by doing night vision goggles for the government, right? And so he took that money and started Valcom in 1977 in Roanoke, Virginia. And it's actually a really crazy story, highly altruistic, has his own planes, a couple of them. Uh, there are times that I have to go to Centennial Airport just to bring him a coffee. Uh, in the old days, now we're, way, now we're way more sophisticated. Now we, I just get him a Starbucks app. Um, but we manufacture everything that we do in the U.S. We also have our software team, our firmware team, and our hardware team are all in Roanoke, Virginia. And that's highly unique. Whenever you talk to anybody else about it, um, we do it all the way, right? So we write the code, we embed the, uh, we print our own circuit boards, which is unheard of in the world of electronics. It now. So because we are part of that, we fall under the Buy American Initiative. We also fall under the CARES Act. So if you have CARES Act monies that you're looking for for general applications, we qualify for that in that space. And we've got about 600 employees. Uh, as uh, I was joking earlier, Dan, about you know, you're calling into the Deep South. So Dan and I are about the only ones, they call us the guys with the accents. That's how we're known. Uh, in that space. So again, so important. Design, engineered, manufactured, and supported in the U.S. So you would have access to make that call. That was another question that you had bro broached, right? Do you have access to us? And the answer is yes. So And it's free of charge. There's no cost that's associated to you. Additionally, when you're working with or talking to other uh, providers, we don't have any residual licensing on the intercom products. We do have some subscriber-based applications, however, those are options. It's not part of the core product. So we do things like what you see that's handed out, right? And you who are all familiar with, I love you guys, you'll recognize the icons, right? So we are a master provider for I love you guys. We are the only intercom provider that is that holds that distinction. Um, go ahead, Dan. Hey, Jim, if I could just touch on support a sure. little more here. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, so so the the idea here is to provide the district uh, an emergency master location solution. And uh, by the way, it's uh, unlimited bell schedules, unlimited paging, intercom. So we're, we're scalable. Um, uh, it is we'll, our, our size will grow with you. We're limitless in that. So with that, the support is super important. Um, how do you all want to manage your own system from the installation perspective to um, maintaining it on a daily basis? Well, that's up to you. We support that effort. Um, we use approved integrators. They can work through uh, your, your bidding process. But in that, we want to help you design your mass notification system. And that's where I fit in. I'm your sales engineer. And uh, I, I take pride in, in my job in, in, in being available for our customers to do this. So um, I'm free of charge yeah. to help you design it, uh, to even help you learn how to maintain it. 
Um, I often come out, uh, well, we have, we have regional training. We just did one a, a few weeks ago in uh, Centennial. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would come out to your site personally and train you folks on the system, how to maintain it, how to troubleshoot it, how to build it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all free of charge. If I'm not available, you're using the system, I'm not available, uh, you've got a uh, question, you've got a, maybe you're troubleshooting something, our tech support team is available uh, to help you as well, and that is free of charge. So we're different than any other manufacturer in that respect. So I just wanted to throw that in before we moved on. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, that was actually one of their target questions, was support, how do we do it, where's the training, um, and obviously the costs that are associated with it. So. Every school district that we just mentioned in passing, we have been on site to do training for it. So it's not just lip service, we actually do come. Um, and Dan, this, this group will probably be very easy to work with because they said that our next meeting could be at a brewery. So <laughs> I don't see a downside at all uh, of working with Windsor. So just keep that in mind. Can I kind of wrap up? Sure, so, absolutely. So Dan had mentioned uh, certified integrators. Yes. Can you tell me roughly how many you've got in Colorado? Yeah, there? thank you. So right now, um, what we consider a certified integrator is people that have gone to our training classes. And we will show you what that class itinerary looks like. So it's not just them going, hey, you know, can you hang a, a speaker? They, they need to know how to wire shark to troubleshoot. They need to be able to understand unicast versus multicast. How do we do that, you know, the ping? Um, how do we set there? So right now, part of your RFI package requested <coughs> that list that came from memory. Right now, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a list of six right now, and that list grows. And so I have a copy here for you, if any of these people ring a bell for you. Um, and that again, that list is growing because we're now doing Denver Police Department. We also support all of the state of Colorado's EOCs, their emergency operations center. And they have volume purchase agreements already in place with some of these guys. So we will train them based on the pre-qualification form. So we, we never leave you with somebody that goes, oh yeah, I can do Belcom. We have embedded lists. Sure. And when we say that, that's like when you call in and you go, hey, um, you know, Sterling did this installation. We have multiple ways to cross check that database to go, yep, okay, you're at Windsor High School. Here's what you have. Here's your parts list that you have. So we're able to really be able to do a deep dive quickly. That's just, part of it. A quick follow up on that. So sure. Thank you for that. that um, We've just been burned with integrator issue before, so when you talk about that list, that's great, and then they're always going through it. Is it? It's not just a stamped list. I mean, so if they if they turn over employees because we had somebody that was certified in a solution, and all of a sudden it's a new person out that maybe doesn't have the knowledge of what you just alluded to. So is it a certification per individual, or do you certify the company? How does that? Work? Yeah, that's it. Sorry, I'm just like no, oh, that's an excellent sure. question. So um, we we certify the technicians. And if that technician leaves, two things happen. He, he doesn't carry that certification to the next company. It sticks with the company, and the company has like a 30-day time frame to have another technician right. installed. And so we will, we do a periodic check. Right. You know, we check quarterly. Do you still, do you still have Jeff right. on the payroll? And they go, yeah, so we go, well, they obviously haven't done a background check. Okay, so, you know, we'll do all, some of these things in those areas. But yes, there is a way that we do to stamp that. Um, this is Well, the, and if I, if, if Gino, if yeah. I can just add to that. Sure. Um, anytime there's any kind of technical issue, it always comes back to me. And uh, the, the last thing we're going to do is support an integrator that sends somebody out that doesn't know our product. That, that will be... That, that will be ended. At that point, um, I usually call Gino immediately and say, you need to fix this. Get, talk to their management, yeah. <laughs> get somebody going here, and uh, let's get somebody out there that knows what they're doing. Uh, if that were the case, um, we would intercede and we would support you at that point. So uh, we're, we are passionate. I was a former integrator. I understand how the integration side works. So. Um, I, I, I take it personal and I make sure that we've got certified folks out there working on your equipment. 
You know, that's important to note, Dan, thank you. Uh, so Dan, uh, prior to coming to Belcom, was one of our lead integrators in Southern California, and that's where I first met Dan, um, out of Southern Cal. And uh, he was an integrator, had his own company for 20 years, and he's been with us for just a short time. He's only been with us for 10 years, um, and I've been with 18. So, um, yeah, absolutely. We have people long in the tube that have been there. Uh, and Dan also supports, you may have heard of a little school district in Southern California called LAUSD. Um, so LAUSD is our flagship school district, 1,400 schools in their district. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure. How did their recent, this last year they had a cyber attack that took them down, like they got a, had a ransomware. How did that affect this system? I Dan, I don't know if you want to answer that, but the answer was, that's, yeah. that's why yeah. they chose us, because of our Linux software application, our platform. So there, it wasn't a hackable system that we have. And we typically have software engineers that are working through Messers, constantly upgrading any cyber vulnerabilities that are out there as well. Cyber, cyber security is a paramount issue for us. And so we, we were not affected at all because of our operating system. That was there. Yeah, let, let, let me let me just add sure. to that. No, that's a great question because yeah. that 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 kind of changed. Uh, uh, I think it kind of opened everybody's eyes. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody like LNUSD is uh, susceptible to cyber attacks, then everybody is susceptible. Um, and uh, so what they did after is they sent out a long list of questions uh, related to network, your software, etc. So we just have to comply with that, which we do. And as Gino mentioned, we are, are constantly uh, upgrading the uh, operating system for those cyber attacks. So um, we're, we're proactive in that area. So how is that updated? Meaning how? From, from us to you? Yeah, from like, how, how would we update the system? That's a great question because typically, what, I, the, the, the question is, the question. Do, do we push do we push firmware updates? Um, no. Would be a better we, way of placing Yeah, we don't. We just notify, especially when it comes to that part of it. Um, and we're actually in, we have a tech summit that we, we do uh, twice a year. We bring all the techs together at, in Roanoke with our engineers. We talk about product and improvement and such. And security was uh, on, the, on the plate this, uh, what, two weeks ago. And what we're doing is looking to do exactly that, putting a program together uh, to where we would automatically push that out. And then you as a customer can uh, sign up for it. Because uh, with our platform, we have that ability. It's just uh, trying to uh, put together the, the right program. So uh, we, we hope to have that here in the next uh, uh, few weeks, actually. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, a couple months just to have the program to where uh, it's feasible for our customers. So, great question. And yeah, we're uh, we're changing the way we do things so rather than uh, us notifying you just by way of email or you notifying us. We'll be proactive, um, linking your system up if you want us to do that to put, push those out to you. It, we received that request from Boulder Valley School District, and as a result of that, from the summit. Um, that's what our next plan is, our next roadmap. So we're very in tune to that. You know, you come to us and you say, hey, here's what we saw. We have this vulnerability or this was a potential. And we have a dozen engineers, software engineers, and that's, that's their charter. Their bandwidth and dedication is for cybersecurity uh, vulnerabilities. We right now are um, installing Los Alamos National Labs. And so if you're familiar with them, um, there was a whole lot of criteria that we had to go through from a security standpoint. We actually, we actually had to reverse engineer our products um, because everything that you see here, there's typically a top back speaker into here, so I can ring into the room and, you know, hey, send, you know, send Jeff to the hospitality suite, you know, whatever we would do back in the day. So now we had to take all of that out because it has to be one way; it cannot be tapped. It can So we are very in tune to the security aspect of that. Um, and so as you, can, as you guys can see here, you know, unsolicited plug, right? So we're the only intercom vendor that plays in that space of I love you guys. We are also part of their NASRO, the National Association of School Resource Officers. 
um, we will be presenting there as well. Um, and then, of course, in Pueblo in April is the California, Colorado Association of School Resource Officers. This is what happens when you work all over the place. Uh, and that's being held in Pueblo. And we are also in attendance there. We're also part of their sponsorship program. Uh, beautiful, my man. If you want to move forward. So I'm going to yeah, let... And let, let, let me, yeah, for, from here, um, yeah. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, you know, I'll just kind of take over sure. and talk about the topology. Mm -hmm. and, and I will be going through uh, a few uh, PowerPoint slides just to touch on, on the areas that are uh, typical within K-12. Um, and then we're going to jump into the software, what it looks like, et cetera. Uh, but notice here, we're a network-centric solution. Notice the LAN, the WAN, so our reach is as far as your WAN will allow us. Um, we are limitless in our scalability. We're simply going to place IP endpoints on your network, such as what you see here. Um, we have a variety. Of, we make more IP endpoints than any manufacturer in the industry. So we have uh, many, many IP speakers, gateways to choose from, depending on what your application is or your need. So in this case, we have clock speaker combos. Uh, these all require one PoE switch port to manage both your clocks and your speakers. And again, we make them in digital or analog face, a lot of different flavors. Every speaker that you're accustomed to seeing in the uh, analog world, we make in the IP. So uh, depending on, again, what the application is, if we're expanding your analog, maybe paging in certain areas, common area paging, we're expanding that with analog speakers, and we make all the different uh, styles from wall to ceiling mount, uh, exterior, et cetera. Well, we do the same with IP as well. And this device here, this is our all-in-one LED display, speakers, flashers, the speakers are talk back, so this particular model is suited for the classroom. And we'll look at it a little deeper here. That's what you see actually on, on my camera view that's on the wall there. And I got we one, have I brought one as well. What's that? And I brought one as well. I have the VL520 oh, loaded. Yes, sir. Once yes, again, sir. I lost yeah. my network diagnostic tool. <laughs> All right. So we'll look at that. We'll take a deeper dive into that in just a little bit. Uh, we make uh, clocks, both analog and IP. We make analog-based clocks. Uh, we make digital-based IP clocks. And you know, I was reading in, in some of your, your literature, there was a couple of uh, uh, key points and, and as far as integration is concerned. Um, one being integrated to the fire alarm, others being you know, push buttons and, and uh, not working to, uh, to your expectations which is 100%. We're talking about emergency mass notification. It better work. This is one of the devices we use if we're interfacing to a third-party system, fire alarm particularly. Uh, there's two ways that, that, the, uh, that we're typically interfacing to it. One is by way of relay contacts, whether it's the fire alarm system notifying us by a relay that it went off, and then what would you like us to do? Some areas like LAUSD, they say, well, they want the paging muted. But in the event that uh, the, the fire alarm panel gets silenced, they want to be able to make an emergency page um, that mutes the, the fire alarm, sends the address out of the speakers. Once they hang up, then the fire continues. So there's a lot of different ways that we can uh, 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 be triggered by the fire alarm. Sometimes they want to send a, a uh, a temporal sound uh, through uh, a light level audio into us to push out to certain areas. We can we can do any type of integration with the fire alarm. Um, you may you may want to uh, if we've got our displays when the fire alarm goes off. Maybe we push out to our displays. Um, you know, fire evacuate whatever that message is you want to send to the uh, to the displays now. Note that the, the temporal sound is going to be going on, the fire alarm sound is going to be going off, it's going to be real noisy, so maybe you just want to trigger a strobe, trigger the, the signage that the fire has gone off. Maybe in, uh, in one building where there, the fire is, uh, is, is uh, being monitored or being triggered from, uh, we, we put in there the display evacuate. 
Maybe the other buildings show that, hey, building A is uh, fires detected, do not go in or near it. Whatever it is you want to push out, we can get as granular as necessary. Push buttons. This, this gateway has eight relays in and eight relays out. So if you want push buttons to launch any of the emergencies, the I love you emergencies, we just provide a push button. If you want to manually trigger your bells with a push button, we can do that as well. Any, what we call events. An event could be an audio message, a visual message, it could be relay closures, it could be emails, uh, a multitude, it could be a cap message that we push out to another system. These events can be clustered together, if you will, we call it, our, uh, you know, by, by way of our playlist, to where if you push a button, what is it that you want that button to do? Trigger just a bell tone or push out 10 different events all at the same time uh, we are in a hole at uh, Windsor High School. Maybe the DO gets a message that is uh, a screen pop, an email, whatever it is we want to do with that push button, we have the ability to do. How many IO gateways can you have on, on your network throughout your, uh, your district? As many as you want, unlimited. So you might have a building that has a firewall panel in, uh, in it, but then your other building has access control. Well, so we put an IO gateway over the building to where we can tie into the fire alarm. And uh, likewise, we put an IO gateway over in the building that has the access control. So in the event of a, a shelter in, a hold, lockdown, whatever the emergency is, immediately we're locking the doors, pushing out a, a, a tone maybe followed by instructions through these speakers and uh, the signage we're pushing out messages screen pops a lot of different methods but again unlimited in a scalability hey, we have an audio gateway yes have a question, question. Uh, can, can you talk to me about your integration with the vigilant okay i, I it, it's coming to me muffled what was that again i'm sorry integration with a vigilant the access control of vigilant yes absolutely yes absolutely uh, we're any access control, we're, we're access control agnostic, just like we are firearm. So yes. Thank you. Yeah, and we do have locations we've invented. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Uh, it, this, the audio gateway, this has two functions. One being, it can provide line level out, line level audio out. Where would we use that? Well, common area paging. And, and when we talk about design, we want to look at the school, look at, at it, is it a new school is it existing do we want to repurpose anything uh, are we completely stripping it and we we, we want to go with uh, uh, a hybrid maybe uh, ip endpoints in the classroom but in the hallways do you do you need ip endpoints meaning ip speakers in a hallway well not typically because they're all going to be in one zone if you will so put analog speakers in the hallways Maybe your horns on the exterior are the same. Put analog horns, bring them back to a channel off this audio gateway. Notice here, this one, this particular one, is maybe a four zone. We make them in one, two, or four zones. In your head end equipment, it comes with a four zone audio gateway. It comes with an IO gateway. It comes with the interface to your phone system, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. But this audio gateway, not only can the channels provide line level audio out to push out to uh, existing amplified speakers. Let's say you have a, a, a building that, uh, you know what, we want to reuse the, the 25 volt speakers in the hallways and the horns. Um, let's do that. We can send line level audio into the amplifier to push audio out to those, uh, out to those speakers, to those horns. Um, what about bringing a source in, like music? Well, we can do that through a channel as well. Bring the music source into a channel, and then we can create uh, events off of that one source. An event being, maybe I want to click music on to play through the whole uh, campus. Maybe I want to turn music on just to the interior speakers or to the quad area. You can create as many of these events, unlimited as necessary, and I'm going to show you how simple it is to turn that music on or off. You can do it through a schedule, but you can have other methods to, to turn them on and off as well. And we'll look at that through when we get to the software. Um, this interactive console, we're not going to talk about it, I'm going to show you here, it's on my screen. So I'll show you this uh, interactive touch uh, panel in just a moment. 
And then, again, this is how are we going to tie into your phone system? Are you currently tied into the phone system? Maybe yes, maybe no. We can do it by way of FXS, FXO, which is kind of the legacy way, which a lot of people do it still today. We can interface to your phone system by way of SIP. So let's just take the FXS, FXO type or style. We simply, with this one particular gateway that comes with your head end, it has two what we call FXS channels, and those could be used to tie into your phone system by way of a CO trunk port. And that's typically how the analog systems are set up today. Well, if you have a VoIP type solution, then we can tie it via SIP. And we would register that back to your SIP phone system. That access number that is provided from the phone system, your user would dial that, and then we would return dial tone. And then at that point, you could dial an all call. You could dial a group that may be just the first through third graders. You could create as many of your site groups as necessary so you could dial it from there. If you wanted to launch an emergency by way of dialing from your telephones, then we can assign a dial code to any number of these emergencies to launch from there. I know one of your pain points was, well, we need more than one way to activate an emergency, and you are absolutely right. When I talk about mass notification, that is one of the key points. What if you had just one location and you couldn't get to that? Well, that's not acceptable. We have to have layers, multiple ways that we can trigger these emergencies. And I say trigger an emergency, but what if you just wanted to dial a code to launch your bell tone? We can do that as well. So very simple to set the system up to perform all of these different functions. And then lastly, here is the software, which we're going to actually take a deeper dive into the software, and we're going to take a look at what it looks like as far as the bells, emergencies, et cetera. But before I leave this screen, any questions? You know, Dan, you broke something. So what is your phone system right now that you currently use? Cisco. Oh, okay. So you're a Cisco UCM platform? Okay. As you can tell, we're a Cisco. We may be changing. Okay. Great point. So we're essentially network agnostic in that space, right? If you want to connect via SIP trunk, just like Dan had alluded to, the old way, FXO, FXS. If you're Cisco, if you go, if you host in the cloud. Well, now what we'll do is we'll just register back to the Cisco. So now you can pick up any phone on your campus and access the page just by dialing that SIP identity. So, yeah, and I know that was one of the, again, the pain points. You won't just have an admin phone. You have to access it from that admin phone. You can see an incident happening somewhere on the campus, maybe on the remote side of the campus, and be able to pick up a phone and make a page or dial a code to put the system into an emergency state. Real simple to do. And I will add one more thing. We are Cisco partners, and you could, if you needed the ability to push out to the Cisco phones, we could do that as well. We have a Cisco telephone paging server where we take all of the extension numbers in, and then we treat those as if they were just groups, groups of speakers, if you will. So we can push audible messages and text messages to the displays. So it's not always typical in a K-12 because you do have the speaker coverage, but definitely in higher ed, when we go into those environments, we're pushing out to the Cisco phones. In that space, for example, like all of the community colleges, the community colleges in the state of Colorado are the backups to the emergency operations centers, and so that's what we have embedded into those. So Ames, Community College of Aurora, they'll all be set up that way so we can even push to their phones and put them in a group. So that's an option, but yes, we even do that. So, you know, we talked about groups, and I noticed in the documentation as well as there's been some struggles with, you know, from volumes to dialing into classrooms to, well, what if we don't want certain areas, certain speakers being dialed, paging, et cetera. And so we've got a lot of 
page to or bells to. Uh, you know, it's real simple within the system. We can create as many groups as necessary. So in the case like here, you can have this gymnasium on its own group. So now you're only paging and sending bell tones, emergencies, whatever it is, to that uh, location, to the gym. Classrooms the same. Bundle your grade levels in, in their own uh, groups, and then you can push out information to just those grade levels, just those classrooms, whether it's bells, pages, um, ad hoc type messages. So create as many groups as necessary. And to notice here to let, well, how, how do you want to how do you want to page those groups? Um, well, you can simply pick up your uh, Cisco phone and uh, dial into the classroom. Now you're talking to the classroom hands free. What if you want to send a, a, a message to a group of speakers? Pick up the Cisco phone, dial that group, and now you're paging just to that group. Um, you can do it with the interactive console. So we've got different methods to reach different areas. Do you have an app? And district one. Yeah, question. Do you have an application on the phone, a mobile application? I'm sorry, say that one more time. He, he wants to know if we have a mobile application, and the answer is yes. We have something that's called v Alert, and that is a mobile app as well. So from a deployment standpoint, uh, and, and Dan, I don't want to cannibalize you, but that's what the question. The question was, do we have a mobile app? Oh, yes, yes, we do. Yeah. And I'll show you that. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that at the end of this presentation or PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, now, just just why? Dialing each school as, a, as, a, as an all call. Well, because we're network centric, we're going to be able to reach the furthest location, group of locations, in this case, a school. So being able to just dial into a school, but then also having a dial code to where you can make a page to all of the schools by one dial code. Okay? So network connectivity is not a problem because with our devices, the device, for all it knows, hey, we're all one big happy family. You can take and group our, the speakers up. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. So from uh, being able to access just a school from the district or the uh, entire school's uh, district, not a problem. And then being able to prioritize. It's super important to set up your structure. Uh, and in a large mass notification system, I may use four or five different priority levels, um, but we have up to, up to 100 different priority levels. Why? Because we can. Um, but it, it, think of it this way. You, you've got maybe music going off on the campus. Well, it's time for uh, somebody makes a general page announcement. Well, that's more important. So the higher the number, the higher the priority. So they dial that uh, group code for the all call, and it mutes the sound. OK, when they hang out, the music continues. Well, what about if they're making a general page announcement that's time for the bells to go off? Right, we just give the bell events a higher priority. Now it overrides that general page announcement. Well, now we've got emergency scenarios. Those are going to have a higher priority than what we just spoke of. What about if the system was in a hold state? Um, so we're in an emergency state, and then you had to make a, an ad hoc page. Hey, something came up. Well, we can give you a, an emergency dial code that trumps even that. And when that emergency message is played, not only will it uh, override the emergency that was launched that the system's managing, but then you can also say, well, I want you to record that, record what was being said. So prioritizing, recording, very important in a system setup. And I, I, I kept this slide in here just to get point out. You might have an area of your campus that um, you can't hear. And when I say you can't hear, it's twofold. In emergency mass notification, hearing the message is, is, number, is one. But the intelligibility of the message is equally important. If you're just hearing sound coming out and you can't understand it, then you're, you're, there's a problem. So when that has to be fixed. Any area of the campus needs to be able to have volume and intelligibility. So we can add analog speakers, but you can say, well, you know what? I just it's just this one area over here. And you know what? By the way, that's that's the uh, the gym area, the PE area, and we want a class change bell. 
just playing in that area. Okay, well then why don't we put up, we've got a 15 watt ID horn. Let's put that out in the gym area. Now you've got um, intelligibility, you've got volume for um, any kind of pages that go off. Plus we've got a 10 minute uh, class change bell that we can push out there. So a variety of different uh, ID endpoints and analog to accomplish what it is you need to accomplish. And again, this, uh, this, this all-in-one unit. We have a couple different flavors. The smaller one that you see here that Gino has, is, it's intended for the classroom. Larger areas, um, maybe the, the uh, gymnasium, maybe the library, the lobby, we've got a larger sign that also can, uh, can be used as not only an emergency, not only information, but in an idle state, the date and time. And we've got a lot of different formats there. So we've got a clock, we've got a um, state of day notification, and we've got emergency notification. And one other thing I want to note here is this threat level indicator. You can see it on uh, my display. That is an add-on. Gino, I don't think, has one on his. It's just an add-on. And where it came from, or how, how it evolved, if you will, is from Aurora Public Schools. We won their business, and the very first two schools that they um, uh, installed, they were hearing impaired. Well, I get a call from them, and gosh, I want to say it was, I don't know, four or five years ago, Gino, maybe four years ago. Four. And uh, they said, well, hey, Dan, we've got these threat level indicators for the hearing impaired. Um, do you guys have anything like that? And I, as they're talking to me, I'm looking up, what's a threat level indicator? Well, come to find out, it's for the hearing impaired, red, amber, green. So I said, well, we don't, but you know what? I can push red, amber, green to my sign, so how about if I just, you know, we change the color based on the threat? I said, well, that's not good enough because this means something in the hearing impaired, ADA. So uh, we took that information, and from that first conversation to the completion of this product, uh, was about six, seven weeks. So um, now we have a threat level indicator that that's, um, can be added to our signage. We also have a standalone POE device that fits in a 4S box that uh, they, they use like in hallways and such for the hearing impaired. Um, we have strobes. We have interior strobes. These are IP. We have exterior. Uh, this blue one is a large, large exterior um, uh, strobe. And if you notice here next to it is the uh, the standalone threat level indicator as well. So a lot of uh, visual because again, if we're talking about mass notification, uh, there's there's uh, two parties that we have to uh, be attentive to. That is those that can hear and those that uh, can hear or struggle to hear. So it's both audio and visual to be complete as far as mass notification. Now this here is is I, I, it's, it's important to know. I talked earlier about um, looking at a school, looking at what the needs are. If it's a new school, we might look at one direction. If it's a retrofit, meaning, hey, we just want to replace the head end. But you know what? The speakers are good. The wiring is good. Well, we can consider this gateway. It's our retrofit gateway. It connects to existing classroom speakers and call switches. So essentially what we can do is we can turn an existing 25 volt speaker in a classroom into a software controlled IP speaker. So all the functions I have as far as uh, an IP speaker, I have now with that analog speaker. I can create as many groups, I can put it in all those different groups. I can increase or decrease the volume in my software now with that uh, analog speaker. I don't have to go and, and grab a ladder, go up in the ceiling, change a tap setting. I can do it all in software. And we manufacture this in two different flavors, an 8-port and a 12-port. 12-port uh, has become the, uh, the gateway of choice because it provides uh, 12 intercom channels, so 12 classroom channels. Um, when you, you can pick up the Cisco phone and you can dial into that classroom and talk to the instructor hands-free. If the instructor has an emergency and pushes a button, they can have an emergency button. They can have a second button that is just called the front desk. So they can initiate calls uh, from that classroom as well through this gateway. 
Um, the, the idea here is with the head-end equipment, it takes, takes three rack you. We're at the, at the site, three rack you. And then you count how many classrooms you have. And I always like to include principal's office, um, uh, nurses, all the offices. I like to put them on their own channel as well. So I might include them. So let's just say there's 35 classrooms. Okay, then I, I use three of these uh, retrofit gateways. Now I have full control of what goes in a classroom, what goes in the principal's office, the nurse's office, et cetera. Um, if the principal doesn't want bells to go off in his or her office, then we just exclude it from that group that the bells are, are being uh, pushed out to. So we have full control. And maybe that the, the uh, one of the offices is smaller. Well, now I can just go in, I can adjust the volume in my software in that, uh, in that office to uh, lower the volume of the pages of the bell tones. Okay, so this is something to consider. And we talked a little bit about building controls, but again, just to highlight it, uh, you got Vigilon? Yeah, we're going to tie into Vigilon. And, and we're going to, uh, on an evacuation, uh, maybe we uh, unlock the doors by way of tying into the Vigilon. Um, on, on, a, on a hold, we lock the doors by tying into Vigilon. Firearm, how do you want to integrate with Firearm? We can do it by any means, any means. And then mass notifications. So what we've been talking about here is pretty much site specific. We all each site is going to be independent, right? And, and the reason why we designed it this way is for emergencies, first and foremost. So no matter what happens to the wide area network, that site is self-sufficient. Emergencies, bells, etc. Now we have what we call our enterprise solution, and it gives you one pain, one, one, one window, if you will, to manage all of the sites, okay? Um, and in doing so, I want to be able to push emergencies, whether it's from the local site or from uh, what we call our VMAS, we're going to look at that in a second, uh, from our VMAS, so we can push out these um, emergencies to speakers, any kind of speakers. We have paid speakers, intercom. We have help points. Help points that mount on a wall. Help points that are the seven foot stanchions that can go on a parking lot. So we manufacture all of this. Maybe we want to push out to visual notification from screen pops to strobes to LED signs. How about radios? Um, Cherry Creek does that now. We push out to their radio. So um, no matter where uh, folks are with the radios, they're going to get a, uh, an emergency that, hey, um, and it doesn't have to be an emergency. It could be a page. Hey, Sam, come on back to uh, maintenance. We, uh, we've got the equipment in here. Okay. But in a, definitely in the event of an emergency, we're pushing out to the radios. Um, what about emails? It's a good way to, to notify people. And then you mentioned mobile app. Yeah, we have a mobile app. And I'm going to show you a little, uh, a little closer what that looks like here in just a moment. So trigger, how are we going to trigger these? Well, we have graphics that we can trigger by. You'll see this in a moment. Uh, touch the screen here, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. The interactive console, we can trigger emergencies from it. Uh, buttons, whether it's buttons in the classroom, whether it's button as admin, whether it's buttons hidden in a closet somewhere, um, as many buttons as you want to trigger, whether it's an emergency or a class change bell, and everything in between. Uh, telephones. Yeah, we're going to be tied into your, uh, uh, tied in with Cisco, so you can pick up any phone. But what if you just wanted a backup phone? Maybe that console could be your backup. So in the event that the Cisco um, and, and communication is down, well, that school's not left abandoned. They can still use a console. You can have a little princess phone if you want it as a backup, and it can be tied into the interact or to, to the interactive touch not touch panel, the interactive controller, um, the, the SIP controller. It could be tied into it. So multiple layers, if you will, of redundancy. And then the mobile app, we can use it to trigger emergencies. And again, just a quick look at VMAS. And for you folks that will be at ISC, we'll have VMAS there so you can look at it um, a little closer. And I always go 
build this out too. Um, little Tip, or not Little Tip, uh, Cherry Creek loves to show off uh, what they're doing there, and they're running bee masks now. And uh, uh, so you can set up a field trip there. They're, they're happy to show you what they've got as well. But it gives you that single pane of glass, if you will, to manage your sites. If you notice, it uses Google Map, and your schools are just placed on that map, and you can click on it, program a, a school. You can click on it and send an emergency to that school. You can geofence a region of schools and send a communication out to just those areas. Likewise, if a school goes into an emergency state, it can not only do what it's going to do, send it from us, audio, visual to the site, but notify um, the, uh, the district office by way of using this paint, uh, using, uh, gosh, you don't even need this. We just go to emails. We can push across the network to screen pops, to speakers there. So um, it gives you this, this one look, if you will, to manage day-to-day um, -day communication, emergencies, and also IP endpoints. We can monitor the IP endpoints, and if any speaker goes down, any gateway goes down, any server goes down, anything, we can notify uh, the, the uh, our VMAS, and then what do you want to do with it? Who do you want to notify from there that that device is down? So it just gives you that management portal. And then our v okay? Safety at your fingertips. You can create as many channels as you want. And these are streamlined emergency notifications. If you see on that first bullet point, I've got it underlined. We use the uh, emergency broadcast channel that, uh, that all of our smartphones use. So when a message gets sent out, it's instant. I can send a message from New York uh, to, to uh, uh, Colorado, and as soon as I hit click, uh, if I'm using my GUI, it's on your phone. And you can have as many channels as necessary. Within those channels, you can have up to uh, a thousand characters per message. And when I say channels, yes, emergency channels. So all of your emergencies, you can then trigger uh, uh, from the phone, but you can also receive them from the phones. You can have channels for your, your group, for, for your uh, departments, maintenance, uh, admin, and just send day-to-day -day messages to those channels. It's unlimited. You don't get charged for usage. Um, and this is one of the, the programs that Gino uh, had alluded to earlier, that there is a service, because this is a cloud-based service that we have to maintain. So there is a, a, a annual service fee for this. Um, the system that we talked about, there is no annual fee for that. There's no license fee for your IP endpoints. When you buy the system, you own it. And I mentioned send, sending emergency. So you can have a user or multiple users um, that are uh, that have the privileges to send. Not everybody uh, is, is going to be that recipient to be able to send, only to receive. So in this case here, you notice we just simply have the I love you icon, I uh, love you guys icons on here. And you can simply push them and uh, uh, initiate the emergency at the school. Last slide, folks. <laughs> the advantages to Valcom, we are American made. We have over 40,000 uh, just K 12 in and of itself, and our support is unmatched in the industry 24 7. Um, if you guys are working through one of the approved integrators, it's a weekend, something, you know, something happens, you can call our tech support, and guess what? We'll give you a call back. Um, retrofit existing systems, this is a forklift replacement. We can look at every school, every site. And, and, and uh, on its own merits. And scalability, unlimited in our size. Folks, you <laughs> endured the PowerPoint presentation. Um, congratulations, thank you very much. Um, this is my favorite part, getting off of this and into the software. But before <laughs> I do that, any questions up to this point? Just one, Dan. You were talking about the 12 port gateway that you can pretty much connect like 12 rooms to that one gateway. Correct. So you, so the, okay, so I just need a little bit of clar clarification on my end. So let's say we have 12 rooms connected to that one gateway. We can set up like three of those rooms as one zone and the other, I hate math, nine to, <laughs> two, nine to another zone. <laughs> you, 
Yes, that, that is yes. correct. So <laughs> on the back of that unit is actually a 25 pair cable, right? And uh, so your existing system might be 25 pair cable. Typically they are. So you can plug into the back of that and then those ports extend to probably a 66 block and then each one has its own individual channel. So let's just say the, the uh, blue orange pair is your first channel off that gateway and it's independent of the other 11 channels. The, uh, the blue pair is a speaker, the, uh, the orange pair is the call switch. So I have full independency within that gateway. So yes, if I want the first, if the first three channels are room 101, 102, 103, I can put them in their own group. I can make them part of the all call, the emergency all call, and then I can make them part of any other group as I want. They can be members of any group. So yes. Hey, thank you. And then kind thank of a follow, kind of follow up on that. So what we did this RFI for was two new schools. But we did talk about the retrofit of the nine existing schools that we've got. You mentioned earlier that you're free. Um, so to have somebody like yourself come out, would you look at, the, at what we've got in? Would you walk that with us? Would you have an integrator do that? How would you how would you help us retrofit? Because what John was saying is we have these things that exist in these schools now. Would you come out and say, hey, you need to get this voice gateway here, you know, or whatever the case. That way you could evaluate it on a school by school basis. Would that be something you would offer to us? Well, I would, I would absolutely offer to you. If you're doing it one by one, typically we'll have the um, the integrator go out, which are they're highly capable of looking at your site and uh, seeing what you have and qualifying it. But if you're setting up a pro, uh, a program, and I did this with Littleton when uh, they they had a, a huge summer project. It was 12 schools. Well, it was our first. 12 schools that we were actually bringing fire alarm into our system as, as our IP endpoint. So what I did is I went out there and I helped Littleton design this. And then the three integrators that won the project for that summer, uh, I had in a room and I spent a day with them uh, going over the whole design. Hey, this, this is the design, this is the dial plan, this is how you, each, each integrator had their own package for their schools. And I help set all of that up with Littleton. So uh, the answer is yes. If it's a, a school here and there, um, typically our integrators can can handle that. But if you say, Dan, we need you out here, we need your help. Um, I, I I I tell people I spend more time in Denver than I do here in my own home. So uh, I'd be more than happy to come by and help you guys design it. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's have some fun. Okay, so notice here, um, we are browser-based, and there was a question uh, kind of alluding to this, um, and I think it comes to, uh, it, the pain point is, on the older analog systems, you have an application that you had to load on a PC, and that's where you program from. Um, well, you don't have to do that with us. It's browser-based, so you can reach our system from wherever the network folks allow you to, whether it's within the district or if it's even remote. Well, if the district IT folks say, yes, yeah, so and so you can have access, you can VPN in to our network, then they can make you routable to the software, okay? I'm simply gonna click on my icon here, and I'm gonna log in as security. It is user permission. It is uh, password protected. So in this case, I'm just going to log into security just because I want to wake everybody up. <laughs> and when I do, I told the system to have this user go right to the I love you guys graph. I can make, create as many graphics as I want. But in this case, I said, this is all this user needs to do. Their security. And I, they're going to be able to point and click. Oh, we can't get the audio from your end. Okay, so what I did there is I activated this emergency by way of the GUI. And uh, a few things happened there. When I say a few things, it's these events that I'm talking about. And assume that we're tied into a vigilant. 
they would have been part of this uh, uh, progression, if you will. Well, I don't want to say progression because it all happens at the same time. We would have locked the doors. I pushed out a screen pop that gave the information, what it is, hold, and then the information. And this came right from uh, the I Love You Guys website. And then you saw that on my screen. On the top line, I put the hold, and on the bottom, I, I uh, ran the, the script. And then on the speakers, I played a tone followed by instructions. I also lit my threat level indicator. So this was a click of a mouse. I can have a push button to do the same thing. I can have a dial put off by Cisco to do the same thing. Oh, I can use my interactive panel. Notice here, I'm going to click. I, well, let me just explain this a little bit, and then we'll kind of progress through the functions. But I can create as many tab, well, oh, actually, the 16 tab. Notice I've got a group tab. I've got a message tab. I've got a recording tab. And I'm going to show you what these are for. But um, let's go to the emergency tab. Um, I can then simply uh, hit my hold, click it. And I'm launching the same emergency. Hold in your room or area. Okay. We're going to come back to this console, but just to show you that we can trigger from here. We can trigger from phones, push buttons, etc. I'm going to log out, and I'm going to log in as Natasha. Natasha happens to be my wife. I bring her to all my presentations and webinars. And here's Natasha's job. She's maintaining my school, my bell schedules. Um, Natasha's got some, um, some other credentials that we're allowing her. Notice when she logged in, I said, well, I just want her to go to the 12-month calendar view. But I also said, well, I also want to give her just quick and easy access to some of the other areas. She can open up the menu, and as long as I've given her access to certain areas, she can go in there, right? But uh, I want to give her access to the I love you guys. She's able to launch emergencies. Um, I gave her access to the schedule editor. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. And then also, she's, she's the administrative uh, person for Windsor High School. So I wanted to give her a graphic. She gives her simple, easy access to some of the daily things that, they, that she might want to uh, uh, use. For instance, maybe manually launch the bells. I could launch it from right here. Uh, I could turn on the music from here. I think that was one of your questions too, right? Was can we insert music or inject music? Yes, we can. You can set it up as Vox activation so it can play and continue or set it up on even on a timer. A lot of the schools will, during bell passing, right? They'll play Lord of the Valkyries or something like that to get the kids to rush into the class. So all of that can be done. <laughs> Where's that? Is that where's that stored? Where's that? Where's where are those audio files at? Are they on the server? And are they where? They're on the server, they'll show you. Yep, we upload the WAV files, open source. Cool. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna show you that. I'm kind of reversing this. I'm showing you a little bit of the fluff, and then we're gonna get it out. <laughs> we're the tail wagging the dog, dog, right? <laughs> so, yeah. And I would say if you can create a bell schedule, you can. Co you can build an emergency mass notification system. It's the same topology, and I'll kind of flow through that in just a moment here. But notice a quick page. The voice that you heard uh, coming out of my speaker was Paul. He, he is our text-to-speech voice built into the software so that, again, when you buy the system, you, you, you get the text-to-speech. And uh, notice here on my quick page, I can send out an ad hoc message. Um, and I've got these predetermined WAV files that we're, we're going to look at in just a moment. I can select one of them and send out one of these WAV files. I can also do a text-to-speech. Um, thank you for your time today. Right? Hey, hey, um, and, yes, sir. Before you do that, so Microsoft Teams just did a new update. We, we can't hear his speakers. So I just wanted to let you know that we can't hear the audio unless you can get a little bit closer to it. Uh, but I just wanted you to be aware because I know you're trying to launch audio and text at the same time. Oh, 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 oh okay. Um, shoot. No, there was a setup. Oh, darn it. Yeah, don't worry about it because that's that 
just recently had one, but yeah, just so that here, but I, I can do uh, a demo here. Go ahead and do your text, and then I'll just do it here so they can hear it. Okay, well, see, so I can set it up to where I can send an ad hoc message to um, just the speakers or the speakers and signage. So I'm going to send it to both. Thank you for your time today. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You heard that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right, could, you couldn't hear that? No, we didn't. We, yeah, it was, it was, uh, oh. yeah. Okay. So here, sure. if, I'm sorry, man, I was just going to do it real quick. So here you can, you know, the, these are the signs, right? So here I'm showing, here's the static IP address, here's the MAC address onto the unit um, as an idea. This Valcom speaker is the perfect choice for talkback intercom, one-way paging, and easy to read text. So you'll see the flashers the going on. It's all priority attention during emergency alert without distracting from the text message. Up to 107 the dB coming out of here. Speaker so and flashers are independently programmable. is what you have to wear hearing protection. You can control how so the speaker can be for daily and emergency <laughs> events. Single, dual, and four-button call switches can also be connected for multiple functions such as intercom calls, panic buttons, or lockdown confirmation. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, thank you. Hey, it, it, just to, to kind of even get granular on the screen, you the user can say, well, I just want to send um, a message just to this building and select the building and then go in and do the same exact thing. Maybe, maybe I just want to send a, uh, a visual. Silent alarms, if you have security, you don't want students to know, here's just how we do that. Okay, so um, you, you can add, gosh, on those graphics, there's so much more you can do. If you wanted to pull up your, if you had IP cameras, you can pull up your IP cameras, click on the URL for the camera and pull up their, their uh, video. So there's a lot you can do uh, to make the user experience much easier. And I can tell you that we are continuously building on this platform. Um, we will have another release here in, uh, oh gosh, it'll be third quarter, and we're making improvements on what you're going to see here. We're constantly, uh, about every four months, we're putting out a new release, uh, just making improvements, and those improvements come by way of, of uh, feedback that we get from our customers. And I can tell you when we do have these new releases, those are also free of charge to you folks. And it's really as simple as um, just you doing the upgrade. Real simple. So um, keep that in mind too. Um, it'll save you a lot of money over time. And again, we're always improving. But let me kind of get granular here. I'm going to log out of this user and I'm going to log into admin. And I'm going to show you kind of how all this comes together. If I click on editors and I go to audio, I'm going to click on an audio files. This is where, when I do, this is where we store our WAV files. Um, I, I think of it as my library of WAV files. Um, I can bring them in, and notice I've got all these categories here. When you get the software, I think it has three categories, but it has about 70 predetermined WAV files um, from bell tones to emergencies, already part of the software. I've uploaded a bunch of mine, like these animal sounds, and I simply went in and I uploaded um, from you know wherever the wherever the source was at. I got all these from from Google. Google free WAV file animals, and voila, they're there. You can bring them into the system. You can. I got people that do professional recordings and they want to upload them. You can do your own recordings from the system, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But upload and text to speech. So as an example, the uh, the I love you guys. All of these were created by the text to speech, the Paul Paul. So if we look at the the hold, this was the hold message that you heard. I simply type that in, push push that out to my speakers. If you want to edit it, edit it. You know. Um, this, this is what I'm creating for my speakers, for my audio. Likewise, I've, I've got the same thing for my visual. So if I click over here on the left to my text message, and I click on messages, it's the same thing as my audio. 
no sear under my I love you guys, and I'll look at the hold. I've got, if you notice on the top line of my display, when I launched that, I launched a hold. That's what I wanted to play on my top line. On the bottom, I wanted it to, I wanted it to display this message. Okay, so I can get granular. If I wanted it just on one line of my display, I would put it all on this in this one uh, text message and push it out to my side as one line. Okay, so you're going to create these messages. Once you do that, you go to the event editor. And then I've got all these events created from bell tones. I can click on this tone and activate it. Okay. Uh, I can go down to the I love you uh, guys. And uh, let's just say the, the I love you uh, whole text message. If I activate it, notice on the screen, and my screen pops there. Okay. So what I did is under this create event, I've got a lot of different events, so don't let this overwhelm you. It's it's it it, it it's kind of kind of falls in line with where we were at. If I want to create an event that's an audio file, remember my audio uh, uh, editor, my WAV file library. I want to create something from it. So if I click on this, I can name it um, Windsor High School, and then I can. Notice when I click on the audio file. Here's my wave file library. I can pick a tone. I can pick an animal sound. Um, I'll pick a coyote, right? And then I can tell it, well, I want to play this one time. Or maybe I want to play it twice with one second in between, okay? And then I can also increase the volume or decrease the volume of that wave file. I can give it a priority. Remember, we talked about priority. So what priority? Is this higher priority than a, a, a general page announcement? Yeah, so I'm going to make it higher than that. But then I can select what group. Where do I want to target this to? And I'm, we're going to look at groups here in just a moment. I want this to go to my alt call group. And then I can click submit. So now, if I go to WHS and I activate it, Did you hear the coyote there? No, <laughs> I knew that was going to be a trunky. What, what is Windsor High School? What's what's the mascot? We're the wizard. The wizard. <laughs> the wizard? Okay, you 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 got your job cut out for you, buddy. Right? <laughs> I was trying to find a wizard sound. I went to Manual High School. We were Thunderbolts. Uh, so we're on the same. Uh, and I wrestled there, and we wore powder blue singlets, and that's an entirely different story. Um, so anyway, sorry, bud. Uh, no, we can't hear it because you've got that suppression. Uh, okay, well, I, and I don't know. If, I don't know if this will help. Yeah, um, I sure. think what Teams is doing. I think it, it suppresses it. Yeah. Um, and that's, it thinks it's yeah. Bad. And I, so, but let's try it. Yep. Yep. Well, it was a baby coyote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a yelp. We did. Yeah. It was a good yelp. Could you hear it that? was a yelp. <laughs> Gino. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes, it was okay. a yell. All right, it was cut. So we can increase or decrease the volume of, of these uh, these files. Um, but notice here, if I wanted to create um, a relay, right? Um, I can select a relay and I can tie that relay to any kind of uh, playlist and such. Um, but before we get to that, let me go over to the um, to the setup tool because I want to talk about the groups. And I want to talk about balancing the system. Um, volume, noise levels is super important. If you can't hear the message, it's no good. If it's, if it's muffled, it's no good. So when you, when you and, and if, we're, if we're targeting a certain area and it can't get there, it's no good. So here's what you do. This is a setup tool. And this is what I would show you folks how to use, meaning the, the IT or m &O or Bolt, whoever wants to maintain the system. But we essentially um, uh, assign the IP scheme to these devices, whether it's DHCP or static, we can do both, okay? Um, so you're setting up the IP scheme. The dial code plan, if we're looking at a district-wide plan, we want to have a district-wide dial code. Like your Cisco phones, 
you assign each handset their own extension. Well, we would assign every speaker in the district their own dial code as well. So if you want to dial into that classroom, you can do that. If you want to dial a group, you can do that as well. So we're going to create this dial code plan. And this is what I help Littleton with, and I would, I'm happy to do it with you folks too. A dial code plan that works across your entire district. Um, but notice here, I can click on this icon and I can create my groups, as many groups as I want. So I've got a lot of different groups because I used my software for every vertical. This same system that we're proposing to you in the K-12, we use in every other vertical. We're not uh, uh, specific to K-12 or higher ed or hospitals or military bases. It's the same software. And we built it based on information that we got from every vertical. Mass notification didn't come just from K-12. It came from every vertical. It's the same software. Just what do you want it to do? What do you want it to say? So I can create all of these different groups and I can give them different priority levels. And notice here, I have these, these dial codes, hold, secure, lockdown. The reason I have these is so I can trigger the hold, the I love you guys hold, the secure, the lockdown from my Cisco phone. I pick up the phone, I dial 600, and I put the whole school into a hold state. Okay, so I can use these dial numbers for trigger mechanisms. If I go down here, I've got 900 my all call. I've got classrooms, 901, I've got exterior locations, 902, but again, I can get I can get classrooms, grade levels one through three in creative group, as many as I want. And then once I have them, I simply put the device, like I can take this speaker here, which you're seeing here, my all-in-one unit, and um, I'm gonna go to my group members. And I have it part of my all call down here, you see it's checked, and my classrooms. But I can make it a part of as many groups as I want, unlimited. Now, if I want to adjust the volume, and here's how you set up a, a paging system, a mass notification system. This is real important. You balance the system by way of picking up the Cisco phone and making pages, okay? And where I always have, uh, when I'm training, I, here's where I have you start. Dial into a classroom. Have somebody in that classroom and talk with them. Does it need to be uh, louder going into that classroom? Does it need to be louder coming back from the hand from the from the classroom to the handset that's calling? Well, here's what you do: you go into programming volume assignment. So I can select the one. Now you're going to have multiple here. If you've got 30 classrooms, you'll have 30 of these signs. You click the one, and I'm going to balance the 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 one classroom. Let's just say that this classroom is typical. 80% of my classrooms are this size. So I'm going to use this one classroom. And notice here, I can adjust the volume going uh, into the speaker from the classroom or out into the classroom. And guess what? I can be on the phone and I can slide this and increase it. When, as soon as I let go of that mouse, the volume increases. And I say, well, can you hear me fine? Oh, yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, you talk to me from the classroom. Uh, you know, I need to make it a little more sensitive, so I'm going to increase that. Okay, that's perfect. Right, so now I can commit those changes to that classroom, and guess what? I can now take those settings and push them out to all of the other classrooms, the other 80%. And then the ones that are maybe the, the classroom, the, the room smaller or larger, I can go and adjust those on their own merits. So balancing the system is very, very simple. A lot easier than the analog because you're doing it all in the software. Once the system is adjusted by way of pages, now everything else is done in your software. If I need to increase the volume of a wave file, let's just say you got it off the internet and it was when they put it together, it was done at a lower level or even a higher level. Well, then you can go in and of that, that particular wave file, you can adjust the volume. Okay, the music source coming in, you can adjust the volume on it. You can even create an event. So if I go back to my event editor and I create an event and it's a streaming audio. So I can select the, the, uh, the, the source here and I can adjust the volume of that source coming in. So I can even do it at that level. 
So these are the kind of things that are our best practices, but will assure that you have a successful uh, install. And when I mean successful, and I've seen this often where integrators have not followed the, this practice, and I go and I, and I visit a customer, and uh, I say, well, how's everything going? Well, it's good, but man, it's super loud over here, but it's, and over here it's soft. And, and so just out of the chute, the user experience was bad. And it shouldn't be because it's very simple to to set these up the proper way. So um, that's also part of what I bring to the table as best practices, and we'll talk about that as we as we start installing. Um, so that said, we built um, events off of the uh, audio file and the text messages. Um, now we're going to go into the schedule. Okay, let's. We've got these schedules already set. I'm going to create another schedule. And I'm going to call this um, Windsor High School Regular Day. Now, notice uh, my events here. I'm going to add an event. And these are the events that I, move this out of the way, that I, um, if I click here, these are all the events that we have. Now, granted, when you set up your system, you might have, you might have five or ten of these events. I have a bunch because of what I'm doing here. Um, with my software, but if I just wanted uh, just a simple bell tone and I wanted it to go off at, uh, uh, I'll just say, 7 o'clock in the morning, I click on this. Now, I can click Add and I can go through the same thing again, or if I let you say I have 10 more events, well, let's make it simple, 5 more events, um, I can click this and just do duplicate it 5 more times, and then I can just go in and and at the time, let's just make this eight, uh, eight o'clock. And then I can make this one. Uh, ooh, let me submit that. Sorry. Then I can make this next one nine o'clock. But then let's just say um, right after that, I have a uh, nine o five. I want to go off. I can create another nine o five like I did here, or I can just. Click on Change Events, and I can pull this one in, and then submit it. So now this is going to go off at 9, and then 9.05. So there's a lot of ways you can set up your bell schedule. Um, very simple. Once you do that, you set up your main bell schedule. I'm going to back up here, and then I'm going to, uh, I want to duplicate the schedule. Just make it simple. So I'm going to make uh, maybe an early release. So I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to duplicate it. Okay. Oh, I just deleted it. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Windsor High School. Let's do this real quick again. And uh, add the event. Zero 08. Zero 08. Let's see here, there, come on Dan, <laughs> oop, I don't want that, submit, and then I'm just going to duplicate this a couple times, boom, 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 all right, now let's go back, and I'm going to duplicate this. Why did I do that again? Oh my gosh, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Create a copy. Create a copy. There we go. And I am going to, I am going to, then I can just go in and I can edit this. I can remove stuff. I can change the time. Um, I'm going to go back. I can rename this because I don't want to keep it the same. And I'm going to make this, I'll just make it. Windsor High School, uh, let's see, Windsor High School, there we go. So I can simply duplicate, just don't hit delete like I just did. <laughs> Three um, times, yeah. I can, I can simply create them here. Now, if I go to my calendar, and this is what Natasha logged into. So let's just, let's just kind of simplify this here. I'm going to log, log out of here, log back into Natasha. She comes right to the calendar, okay? And notice I have nothing scheduled. So you can do this at the start of the year. 
you get your calendar and you would start on Monday, regular, regular Monday. What schedules are, are going to play on your Monday? You can have as many as you want, but I'm just going to simply click on my assigned schedules here. And I'm going to click on my Monday through Thursday and submit it. Tuesday, I'm going to do the same. Uh, I'm going to do my Monday through Thursday. And I'm going to do my, these are my typical Monday through Friday. Uh, this one is also my Monday through Thursday, but it's also my WHS schedule. And then here we have our Thursday, plus I have a, uh, I'm just going to do, uh, again, I'll do the uh, WHS. And then Friday is going to be uh, Friday schedule. So this is my typical Monday through Friday. So if I click on uh, any of these days, you can see on my Wednesday, every Wednesday for the next 12 months is my Monday through Thursday. Well, we have exceptions to that. And we address those exceptions by what we call adding a date group. So up here at the top, I'm gonna add a date group. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a holiday. Okay, because uh, there's certain days I don't want the bells to go off. Holiday, and you know what? I'm gonna make this date group I'm going to change the color. I'm going to make it green because it's a holiday and we're happy. We're not going to school. <laughs> uh, so in that holiday, let me see, I can, I can uh, December. I just let's select these days. You can know, notice the dates are turning green here. Uh, whatever those days are in advance, uh, maybe uh, maybe here, here, I don't know, wherever. Pick them all the day, the, the, at the start of the year. Spring Click submit, right? And now, if I click on this green, this holiday that I built, notice here in my assigned schedules, there's nothing there. So if I kept it at that, then no bells would go off. I want to give it a visual, so I'm going to select my holidays and submit it. So now, these, this date group, which is green, is set to play holidays. Well, what if we have a back-to-school night? Why is that important? Well, let's let's. I have a back-to-school night, I believe. Do I have one in here? Yeah. No? Okay, but I can create one. I can create a new schedule from here. Um, call it back-to-school uh, night. Okay? And I can add my events. What events would I add? Well, how about, how about at 6 p.m. on a certain night, we have the principal's recordings play. Well, the principal's out shaking hands, but the principal had made recordings, reading the parents, maybe uh, in between uh, class uh, period change, where parents go from their students one class to the next. Uh, the principal talks about ways parents can get involved and such. Well, you can create events via recordings. You can have the principal under editors and under events, Right. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't give this user the ability to uh, create audio. Oh, no, I did your audio. Under recordings, the principal, you can have recording groups that, um, well, like here, five, 504, the principal from the system phone that's 504 can program or record his or her greeting to the parents, and we can have that play at the opening, uh, opening hour at uh, back to school night where they're walking around shaking hands, but that message is being played. And then you can have it, um, uh, you go in here and you change the greeting from back to school night to end of uh, back to school, do a rec recording there, and have that play at the end of the back to school night. Okay, a lot you can do with recordings. Um, I've got a good morning, good morning recording. Um, and what I did here is I made this specific um, for the principal to where any time the principal dials 